Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, I feel very privileged and happy to be part of these uh, sessions. And um, the beauty of this session is like, um, we are all unified and united as one family, regardless of any denomination, any congregation you may belong or any religion you may belong, does not matter. And uh, that's the beauty of these fellowships, you know. Because we are gathered here under one name, the name Jesus, who said, I'm the life, the way, the truth. And he was the one who died. In other words, he gave his life as sin offering for the world's deliverance, for the world's redemption. That's part of God's redemption plan to redeem the world and its creations from sinful deeds. Therefore, you and I receive that dominion. We don't lose the dominion, right? Okay. You may belong to any tribe, any religion, any congregation. There is one thing in common if you have observed. Every one of them have understood one fact, that if you have to receive forgiveness from God, you will have to give in return something that costs you so much, which is nothing but your life. <laughs> is there anything costlier than your life? Tell me. You value, for example, someone says, I'm going to kill you in a microsecond, or maybe he gives you a minute. If you would not give me everything that you possess, what would you do? Life or everything that you possess? Obviously, I make a choice to give away everything because my life is more precious. I lose my life. What is the point of... Anyway, after my death, this guy is going to take away all my possessions by force. So how about me giving it by choice and then living my rest of the life and then I will see what to do about earning it again and stuff like that. Correct or not? Isn't it? Likewise, if you want to receive that forgiveness from God, the only precious thing or the choicest thing that you have is your life because that costs you the most and you're not ready to give that life, right? And I'll tell you one more interesting thing. You are not needed to give your life because why? Jesus gave his life on the cross. Sin offering, a sacrifice. So what happens is, before Jesus came, there was an alternate for Jesus, laying that bull or pigeon or goat, or according to their uh, riches, you know, according to their, um, what to say, how much ever they could afford, they could buy anything. And depends on the offering. I am going to also do a series on offerings. That is, the time is just not enough, and I'm going to do it for sure. You understand? That was the alternate. But Jesus himself took that altar, that sacrifice altar, altar of sacrifice, and he was laid on the cross. There are various other religious doctrines also referring to this Jesus. Is, uh, is, 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 um, I forgot the Sanskrit name, uh, pr pr Prajal or something like that, right? Um, where it's referred to um, the Son of God coming and setting himself as sacrifice on the cross. Every every religion in, in, in Quran, they have accepted Jesus as prophet, but not as son of God. But as much as they respect Jesus, they also have accepted the sacrifice on the cross. But no, he's not the son of God. They rejected him. Talking about Jewish community, they completely rejected Jesus. No Messiah, not even son of God, maybe a prophet, but he is accused, right? They, they accused him. And he was the prime accused. And they laid him on the cross. It was they who rebelled against Jesus, not the Romans. right? Romans just executed the order because um, they didn't have permission to lay anyone on the cross by themselves because it was actually the Roman jurisdiction that controls everything within Israel. You understand what I'm saying? Therefore, people even today also, they have... They had been following the practice, especially whoever have not accepted Jesus, that sacrifice. If you accept Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, then 
it's not that you are a slave but you have accepted him as as you as your savior as your lord as your king right and if you accept him as your king you are not a slave you are you are king's child <laughs> you have that inheritance you you are the heir of his inheritance understood that's the meaning behind accepting jesus as your savior and not only that you also inherit the the redemption for free the deliverance for free the holy spirit for free who becomes your helper salvation for free and inheritance of this kingdom of heaven regime right you will be part of kingdom of heaven why because the sins of the past are all cleansed and forgiven in jesus name that's the power behind the cross that's the power in the name of jesus that's the beauty and miracle in the blood of jesus that you and i get everything for free redemption deliverance salvation a place in the kingdom of heaven and consistency to walk on earth right spiritual consistency i mean to say but even today also people are sticking to the old covenant they sacrifice any religion i'm telling you they all have these rituals and practices please go around and check out you understand what i'm saying people are still sacrificing bulls and goats and sheep and all those things why because they have rejected jesus and that's what bible says when he appears in the mid air on that day of rapture after great tribulation according to matthew chapter 24 verse 15 all the way to 33 or 35 you will see that all those who have rejected him will mourn ah oh, the truth was revealed but we rejected the truth and we were sticking to some other doctrine this is going to happen not it happened therefore you will not believe right like what jesus predicts about those 14 events which we are carefully reviewing one by one you are able to believe why because these have happened today had happened today sorry and these are these are these are ex, these have taken place already therefore it's easy for you to believe well no one was giving all indications hey rain is going to come man the whole earth will be wiped off save your lives come inside uh, receive the salvation for free and all that no one listened but at the end of 120th year god said that okay this is it and he sends rain upon earth and that's when people starts to start you know they have started to knock the door of the dark open it up now open it up no the door is shut your time is over waiting time is over yeah and no point in mourning right because after you have lost everything what is the point in mourning can you mourn after your death <laughs> correct or not but when jesus comes in the mid air you are spiritually dead because you are already spiritually dead but you will have that realization you will have that sensation that yes truly i am dead today absolutely okay all right a warm welcome to this episode number 2 where we are reviewing this careful analysis on this fact that jesus christ is returning to earth it's just not a fact it's going to be a historical event which the whole world will witness whether you want it or not whether you like it or not whether you're willing or not whether you dislike or like does not matter god is going to send his only son jesus for the second time and this time is not going to come as that uh, you know that jesus in humility and all that he is going to come as a warrior as a judge seated on the right side of his father in heaven as judge judgment seat of christ you can see that in second corinthians 5:10 yeah and uh, Jesus is still compassionate when the disciples approached him and asked him how do we realize and how do we know that the end times have come already uh, Jesus left behind various indications and uh, those indications are all related to natural catastrophes and disasters and so many events right and there are 14 events which we have really lined up and it may take a long way to finish all this 14 events we are in the third event right now discussing through earthquakes and its natural catastrophes associated natural catastrophes uh, prior to which we have done couple of events wars laws and while while uh, what is it lawlessness and uh, the second was uh, uh, famine and drought leading to poverty right which is pretty much in place today <laughs> we have discussed almost for 70 hours i think this is our 70th hour Uh, where we are talking through only about these three events and not yet done with the third event yet 
and the episode one we have covered on eschatology talking through those seven events which takes place after jesus comes second coming rapture and uh, judgment uh, day and new heaven and earth and eternal misery in hell spiritual immortality and intermediate state so many things we discussed episode three we have pipeline to discuss through the great tribulation what is your understanding may be completely different when i walk you through the bible and uh, we have also pipeline in episode four which talks about the six trumpets revelation eight and nine so it's a complete package representing all connecting to the second coming of jesus as an event why because we are inviting you this is your last chance yeah not by force not by enforcement because india is a democratic country and it's your choice i mean democracy is all over the world except for few uh, communist countries like china russia and all the other few places right it's your choice it's your free will you can practice any religion you want you can believe any doctrine you want as long as you don't disturb the law and order it's up to you you want to believe and go to heaven you don't you want to disbelieve and go to hell it's your choice but we are speaking from the bible up to you to accept or reject we don't force anyone we don't convict anyone uh, it's not our interest because why we honor the law of the land the law of the land clearly says that you cannot force any religion to anyone no we don't do it ah before even the law of the land was enforced our jesus never forced any of his doctrines into somebody's mouth open it up come and swallow this doctrine i don't think jesus said that any time to anyone it was out of love and compassion he reached out and yeah more than he following people people followed him that's the kind of doctrine we are preaching and teaching today not by force okay and uh, right now we are reviewing you know the natural catastrophes um especially all connected to earthquakes and other natural disasters like cyclones and hurricanes and stuff like that right in a chronological order from your bible and my bible yeah we have we have bible in common correct so no one can reject that fact or truth because it's historical evidential if it's my own fact or my own dream my own vision yeah you have every right to reject but we have something in common that's called as bible now our previous session we have discussed about this destruction of sodom and uh, gomara i hope you got a chance to review or listen if not please listen and then come and uh, before which we discussed about noah's flood and before which discussed about the third day of creation all in chronological order we are coming from the bible and uh, today we are going to discuss if time permits we will cover two different events um, that has been described in the bible um all related to earthquakes and natural disasters and it's nice to study bible like this don't you think so therefore you get a comprehensive understanding um moses on the mount of sinai is the title on which we are going to spend little time from the book of exodus and hebrews right before god spoke to moses on mount sinai and gave the 10 commandments a great shaking of the mountain occurred i would like to just give a brief description of what we are likely to discuss in the uh, next few minutes exodus chapter 19 and uh, verse number 18 okay uh, so i want to actually rewind the tape a little bit right why this incident has have taken place this took place because there was a rebellion a uh, spirit of rebellion found in the people of israel now what kind of rebellion is that what uh, why did they rebel for what did they rebel so moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before them all these words which the lord commanded him i'm reading from exodus 19 verse number 7 onwards we will try to cover Uh, everything you should understand the background right then all the people answered together and said all that the lord has spoken we will do so moses brought the words of the people to the lord and the lord said to moses behold i come to you in the thick cloud that the people may hear when i speak with you and believe you forever so moses told the words of the people to the lord see what happened here is um the people 
themselves want to hear the voice of God. We don't want you to be our mediator anymore, Moses. Yeah. In other words, they have in other words they have rejected him as their prophet, our deliverer, appointed by God. Moses himself did not receive that power to split the Red Sea and uh, make the chariots of uh, Egypt, Egyptians to drown in the Red Sea and buried in the middle of the sea. Even today also there are chariots available there. Yeah, they're not able to lift it up because they're very heavy. And I think they took one or two chariots out and they explored and everything is available. Historical. This is a book of truth. Historical. Not some imagination written by some human being. No. And, the, uh, and then the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. God gives them certain instructions because some, you know, some of them could be unholy and God might end up killing them. And let them be ready for the third day, for on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Mount Sinai is a very... A uh, special place for Moses because that's where he receives the Ten Commandments, if you remember. And you shall set bounds for the people for uh, all around saying, Take heed to yourself that you do not go to the mountain or touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. God gives another instruction now. You know, Not a hand shall touch him. But he shall surely be stoned or shot with an arrow. Whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come near the mountain. God gives that another instruction. How they should proceed and approach the mountain. That is the holy presence of God. That is a mannerism. That is a principle. That is a mannerism. That is a rule. Then Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not come near your wives. Yeah. No sexual intercourse is allowed and you got to sanctify and uh, something like that. You know, God makes it very clear because you're going to hear the voice of the creator of heaven and earth. The last time who heard that voice was Adam and Eve. And after that, God's appointed chosen prophets only heard his voice. No one else could hear, not a common man or a woman. But for the first time, God comes forward. Okay, fine. You want to hear my voice? Is that? Okay, fine. I will come and talk to you. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning. I'm reading from Exodus 19, verse number 16. Third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings. <laughs> and a thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled in fear. Did we make the right choice asking, uh, you know, raising a petition that we want to hear God's voice? Now everyone start to think. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. Right? Beloved, when the presence of the Lord descends in your life, I told this before also in the previous sessions. Your life will quake. Quake in the sense it will be torn apart. Because why? God wants to bring some rejuvenation. You have some refreshment, some uh, ref some, some recreation, some, some cleaning process. And God God's presence will quake that place. And the quaking is also another... Um, uh, representation of bringing that change in your life or to your life. Yeah. Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended in fire and the earth quaked. And God answered him by voice in verse number 19. And the Lord came down in the Mount Sinai on the top of the mountains and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountains and Moses alone went up and he was not killed because Moses is the chosen servant of God. Right? And that's enough. So the point we are trying to make here is 
no doubt the earthquake prepared both Moses and Israel for the important truths the Lord was going to communicate. If you want to receive the divine will and plan of God, if you want to be aware of God's dream and vision for you and me, there is a preparation process and that's why I read the entire paraphrase. There is a sanctification process, there is a refinement process, there is a remission of sins that needs to take place, there is something called as repentance through confession that needs to take place. There must happen forgiveness of sins. Then you are receiving that forgiveness for free through the remission of sins and remission of sins could happen except by the blood of Jesus. No other thing, no other instrument is able to cleanse you and me for free and making us free of your unrighteousness and pronouncing you as righteous people of God. Therefore, you are prepared. Therefore, you are sanctified therefore you are qualified to receive that will of god to receive that divine plan of god to receive that holy spirit of god acts chapter 2 verse number 38 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 to 10 acts chapter chapter 11 and verse number 18 all these things philippians 2 10 and 11 all this you read you will understand what i'm talking if that, that is not enough leviticus 16 you read the day of atonement there is an old covenant procedure versus a new covenant procedure but both are interconnected not exchanged interconnected they're one and the same only thing is the replacement of a bull in the place of bull jesus took it took its took his place you know that which is which is what we have described before so if you are having that desire that's a wonderful desire that's a wonderful thought that you want to um, hear from God directly the plans that he has for you and me. Yes, nothing wrong. That's how it should be. You don't have to run and stand up in that long queue, uh, the doorstep of the prophet's house or a prophetess house and all these things. You know, God is able to communicate to you and me directly without a, without a doubt, I can tell you this. And God is merciful and he definitely wants us to talk to him and ask for the plans. But for which, if God will need to communicate, you got to reach to the standards of God. And you cannot reach to his standards all by yourself, all by your deeds, all by your works, all by your might, all by your capabilities. No. But through the name of Jesus, you and I can receive that sanctification. Why? Because we all have fallen short of glory. Right? We are all filthy rags before God because the weakness of the flesh is still dwelling in our bodies. Yeah, nothing but the sinful deed that was committed in the cross, sorry, that was committed in the Eden Garden and which was wiped away through the blood that was shed on the cross. Except by that blood, you are not able to receive that sanctification for free. Not even by your works. You may say that, ah, oh, crucify me. Let me shed my blood and receive that sanctification. Receive that forgiveness. Receive that Remission. No, sorry, your blood is not equivalent to the blood of Jesus. His blood was blood without blemish. He lived that life, the Son of God. Although he was tempted like you and me at all points, he lived that life without blemish. That's what Bible says in Hebrews 2, 17 and 18. You understood, huh? So the meaning of this earthquake, we are, we are referring to all the earthquakes <laughs> that are referred in the Bible one by one. And uh, we are actually making a you know a, a detailed study helping you understand what is the meaning of those earthquakes do not look at earthquakes just like a natural disaster ah so what a big deal and all you will understand nothing yeah this awesome shaking even continues to be remembered in the new testament as the context for god's delivery of his law and turn your bible now to the new covenant hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 verses 18 to 21 or maybe 24 we will read it right the glorious company under this title the writer of the hebrew leaves behind certain important facts all connected to earthquake and its natural catastrophes yeah i want to carefully review with you and we will close on time just stay connected with me for you have come, you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned with fire 
and the and to blackness and darkness and tempters carefully the writer of the hebrew is connecting to that exodus reading paraphrase reading what we did just now yeah the same verses you will find over there exodus 19 we we, we did that study remember you cannot forget so quickly <laughs> just now we read when the lord descends on that mountain there was a thick cloud and there was a fire and because he his presence landed over there and there was blackness and darkness right and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them any more yeah the later half of exodus 19 i did not read the you know people were trembled in fear they said no more no more we would want to hear his voice again you be our mediator and you be the person who will mediate for us and get us the reply response ah that's enough moses the writer of hebrew is you know reminding years of years of past i mean thousands of years of past almost 3500 years of past or maybe 2500 years have passed no 3500 years i think so yeah so for they could not endure what was commanded verse number 20 hebrews 12 20 and if so much as a beast touches the mountain it shall be stoned or thrust through with an arrow even the beast which unknowingly would touch that mountain is going to be killed because why so holy is his presence and how is that christians today are taking this aspect very 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 lightly even a beast would not be spared how about you and me sixth sense god's wisdom god's prudence god's diligence god not god's knowledge is in us whether you acknowledge or not whether you accept it or not whether you have realized it or not that's a truth you and i have been created in the image of god all of you understand this God creates you and me in his image Genesis 2:27 I think one, one yeah 127 I think yeah and Genesis 2:7 also you can read clear so by what man by I mean uh, by what means you ex- you expect uh, forgiveness or omission uh, from the punishment that's been pipelined or that's been predestined to those people that rebel to those people that reject to those people that are reluctant to those people that are negligent and careless if god is not going to spare the beast which means what touching his presence means what receiving the holy spirit is nothing but touching his presence and then insulting the holy spirit insulting the blood covenant insulting the grace insulting the mercies of god insulting the favor that was shown on the cross trampling the son of god right under your feet that's what it means hebrews 10:29 read it you will understand it's all in your bible uh, the wrath of god shall descend on your bible says in john 3:36 that's a new covenant whenever we refer wrath anger people say ah oh, that's old covenant brother no no it's new covenant brother but only thing you will taste that wrath only during that white throne judgment day because why this wrath the beginning of wrath you know what is the beginning of wrath of god in your life he walks away from your life which means what the devil becomes your ruler and that's a beginning for your disaster yeah it will be well for you if you have realized that the master of your life is the devil and not god therefore you have enough time to repent and reconcile with god once again and come back to your senses and not lose that inheritance not lose that wonderful opportunity that god had predestined for you and me to live with him eternally in the kingdom of heaven and so terrifying was the sight that moses said i am exceedingly afraid and trembling even moses was scared god's presence was so so fierce even the hills will melt like wax you have heard this right in the old covenant before his presence angels bow down can you imagine the servant of god and he has not trembled like that before why because god was really angry with the people very angry with the people and god's presence when he comes to you with love and compassion you will enjoy but the same presence when it comes in fury oh my goodness no man can uh, no man can withstand that but you have come to mount zion and to the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem 
to an innumerable company of angels. Yeah, Mount Zion is he is referring the same Mount Zion to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven to God the judge of all to the spirits of just men made perfect now how are we getting into the realm of perfection through the name of Jesus through the blood of Jesus through the sacrifice on the cross and your name is already registered in heaven can you believe this even after those people heard the voice of God not a single one of those guys have entered into the land of Canaan. Do you know that? Land of Canaan is nothing but the replica of kingdom of heaven. Yeah, because why? There was something missing between the voice of God they heard versus the destination that is the land of Canaan. What is that? The sacrifice, sanctification, right? Reconciliation, missing and it could never be fulfilled. Through their deeds. Some really tried hard including Moses. Even Moses could not cross. Because why? He did not rebel but he violated the order given to him from above. Instead of speaking to the rock. He was angry with the people. He struck the rock. That's like crucifying Jesus for the second time. No sorry you violated my commandment. Forget it you are not crossing. And for your sake even I was punished. Moses would register that in the book of Deuteronomy. Lastly, verse number 24, that's the key, right? To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel, than that of the voice that you heard in the mountain, than everything. God himself humbles before his son saying, listen to my son. Yeah, when Elijah and Moses met him in the mount, uh, I think in the same Mount of Olives or Mount Sinai, could be Mount Sinai, I think, right? Jesus came there. Yeah, it's Mount Sinai. Jesus came there and uh, this time the Lord speaks again. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, of course, these guys were trembled in fear too. Who? Oh, James, John and Peter. And they heard him saying, listen to my son. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Through whose name there is salvation. Through whose blood there is redemption and deliverance. You understand? He's the pathway to heaven. In other words, he's the mediator of the new covenant, Bible says. Moses was the mediator of the old covenant and that mediation failed. God's anger aroused against the people. You all understand what I'm saying? Yeah, today, who knows brother, today may be your last day on earth. You may not live the next day. And today is your best chance. That you are able to, you know, come to Jesus, come to the cross and inherit that wonderful blessing that is nothing but your place in the kingdom of heaven. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity that you have given us. At another time, you have come and spoken to us so vividly, so personally, Lord. And ultimately, we... Give all that respect to the name of Jesus and his precious blood. Today we have understood the significance of that blood on the cross. Thank you very much for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you brothers and sisters. Thank you for your time. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not. Because you will start receiving automatic notifications each moment we release our videos. Therefore our desire is please do not miss on a single video. Yeah, Bookmark those and kindly listen. Make some time and listen. And kindly share the channel details, the videos you watch or something like that to your friends, relatives, whomever you know. Lead others into the life of salvation. That's your important duty on earth. And uh, continue to remember me and all the ministers of God in your personal prayers because it's a very important command to you from the Bible. right? And likewise, if you have a prayer request, you don't go to the ministers of God and stand in the queue and all that. Reach out to your Abba Father in heaven. Reach in, get into your room, close your door and talk to your Abba Father in the name of Jesus. Matthew 6, 5 and 6, Philippians 4, 6 and John 14, 14. I'm giving you references. Alright, God bless you and uh, thank you very much for your time.